Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm here doing another player interview today. Today, I'm going to be interviewing a 6'3 senior guard out of Bellarmine, Dylan Penn. They just made the transition last year to the Division I level, and he took off right off the bat. He was an all-conference player in his first year as a D1 player and helped Bellarmine go up to the number two spot in the A-Sun standings. He's a phenomenal player, a really great guy. Let's try it like that. Does that work? There we go. There we go. Now we got you on here. Finally. Finally, yeah. Fifth time's the charm, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Uh, like I said, great to have you on here. Uh, I mentioned it before. You guys last year finally made that transition to the Division One level. Your first two years at your school, you were at the Division Two level. Talk to me about that transition, uh, going D2 to D1, becoming a part of the ASUN conference, uh, and how you and your teammates really embraced that change and the success that came from that embrace. Um, I've said it before, you know, the difference between high-level Division Two and, you know, low, mid-major Division One. Um, there's not really as big a difference as people think, but we did run into some bigger guys, some stronger guys, some more athletic guys over this past year. And I think we embrace it just by, you know, staying true to what we do and playing our style of basketball. Yeah, you guys started off the season strong, ended up going against Duke right off the bat, one of the best teams in the country every single year. Then you got your first win against Howard and started off conference a little slow, had two losses, but then absolutely dominated basically the rest of the conference, a 10-game winning streak ended up being number two in the conference, made the CBI tournament. Talk to me a little bit about that run that you guys had, what you guys really did to take it up and down, uh, during conference play. Um, I think a lot of it was we just settled in. You know, once we got our first win, uh, we got some confidence because there were a lot of questions, you know, last year about how we would adjust to the Division One jump. And I feel like once we realize, you know, we can play with these guys, what we if we keep playing the way we play and keep doing what we do, we can be successful and, you know, we found a groove, we stuck to it. We had a really good year, you know, we fell a little short in the conference tournament, but, you know, we bounced back from that and we were able to get our first postseason win at division one in our first year. And that was huge. So, you know, it's just, like I said, just staying true to what we do. And like last year, it just grew a lot of the confidence that we had. Yeah, like you said, you guys got your first postseason win in your first year as a Division One team. Not a lot of teams are able to do that. Usually there's a few years where they got to, you know, kind of really transition into that level. You guys took off right off the bat. Talk to me a little bit about that game where you guys ended up beating Army in that CBI tournament. What was the atmosphere like during the game? And tell me, talk to me about the celebration that went on afterwards. Oh, man, we – um that we played down in Daytona and we we wanted to go down there not overly stressed or you know too uptight about the game you know we've we've been through a long season we've been through ups downs you know COVID happened stop start so we wanted to go out there and we wanted to play free and have fun and you know just play basketball the way we had all year um navy was a good team they're a very capable team of beating a lot of good teams throughout the country and we had a good game you know my man pedro bradshaw playing in the g league he had one of his best games of the season and you know we went out there we played we did what we did and we were all happy to you know get that first victory um there wasn't much celebration because we had to turn around and get ready for pepperdine the next day but i mean we got to you know go on the beach the next morning you know relax clear our heads so, I mean, just enjoying each other, just chilling around, watching tournaments on, watching games. Like, that's all we really enjoyed doing at the time. Yeah, you guys really, really just performed phenomenally there. You mentioned uh, Pedro Bradshaw, how he's in the G League now. He really stepped up just like yourself. Both of you guys in your first year at the Division One level, first team all-conference in the A-Sun. You just got named preseason all-conference this year. You're arguably one of the top players for player of the year uh, this year. I think you really do have a very good shot at it. Last year, you averaged 13 points, four assists, four rebounds a game, shooting over 50% from the field. That's phenomenal. Talk to me about 
you know, how you really stepped up, became a leader for your team last year and what you're doing to become even more of a leader this year? Um, I mean, last year I was a returning starter and, you know, I've, I've had a lot of playing time, a lot of experience. So it's just sharing that with more guys that have to step up and embrace that role. Um, and it's a lot of the same this year. We got a veteran group coming back, you know, CJ Fleming, Ethan Claycomb, Justin Betts, you know, we're guys we've been here before. We've played a lot of minutes. We know what to expect. We know what coach wants. We know what a lot of teams like to do. And it's just, you know, teaching the young guys, bringing them along with us, and bringing it every day in practice, you know, getting ready for that next, for that first game. And, you know, every game after that, you know, every day it's an opportunity to get better and we embrace that challenge every day. Yeah, got to embrace that. You guys are definitely, I believe you were, I want to say you guys were third or fourth in the rankings in preseason. No doubt it's going to be higher because you guys are just so connected. You play. I got to see you guys play in person when you played at FGCU last year. And you guys really just seemed so connected. And I think that played a big part for you guys. Uh, you had those two games against FGCU. You actually had seven plus assists in both nights, really being a true point guard for your team. You had 22 against Howard, uh, 13 in that win against Army. Is there any game uh, that really sticks out to you last season that, you know, during your first season as a Division One player kind of is going to stay with you for the rest of your life as a just a phenomenal memory? Um, probably the Tennessee Chattanooga game, just for the fact that, you know, we didn't win that game. And it, that was the first game where I was in my mind. I was like, we can compete with these teams at this level, you know. You jump from Division Two to Division One. you got a lot of questions about, like, this guy, that guy, this guy got offered from here, 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 coming out of high school. This guy, he transferred from this big school. Like, we went out there and we competed and we played our game. And we didn't have C.J. Fleming that game. But we went out there and we played. We were in the game the whole game. You know, we took the lead a few times. And we didn't – We it didn't end with the result we wanted. But I feel like that game really helped us push – to, you know, break through and get us to that next level to get us the confidence we needed to go on that run throughout the conference play. And another game that's going to stick in my mind for the rest of my life, I mean, you play at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Like, you're you're never going to forget that. Yeah, those are, those are, you know, great memories that you'll have the rest of your life. Now you guys are going into this season coming up. You had a little, you know, nice non-conference schedule last year. This year, I looked at your guys' schedule right off the bat, number nine, Purdue. You guys played number two, UCLA, and then, of course, number one, Gonzaga. Some phenomenal teams. All of them have future NBA players on their rosters. Um, what game are you looking forward to the most this year? And what about this season should – uh, Bellarmine fans really expect from you guys going against such high-level competition? Uh, the game I'm probably most excited for is Gonzaga, just because I've never been that far west. And I think it'll be fun to go out there and play in, um, at their place. Um, I mean, we get to play UCLA in Las Vegas, and we get to play Purdue at Mackey Arena, so I mean, really, out of those three, take your pick. Um, the, those are just three incredible programs, incredible teams that we get the opportunity to play this year. Um, Bellarmine fans, if you watched us, followed us, you know what to expect. We're going to we're gonna play our style of basketball. We're going to play team basketball. And from the time that ball goes up to that last one, we're going to compete. doesn't matter what the score is. doesn't matter who's on the floor. It doesn't matter what the team's ranked. It doesn't matter who we play. We're going to go out there and we're going to give it our all and we're going to compete. And that's something we've always hung our hat on. And that's something we're going to continue to do throughout this year through the ups and downs, the highs, the lows, the good and the bad. That's all you can do, you know, and that's our plan. And we've done that since I've been here and we've been very successful with that plan. Yeah, you guys had a lot of success last year, like we like we talked about. And I can't wait to see this success, the success this year, if I can talk right. Um, like we touched on a little bit before, Pedro Bradshaw, he's in the G League now. He provided such an impact for you guys last year. Talk to me about that 
experience being able to play with someone like him who is now at the NBA level, quote unquote, yeah, it's G League, but it's still part of the NBA, being able to play alongside him and how you think being able to play with him has helped grow your game as well? Uh, man, like I love Pedro. He's, he's one of my brothers, man. Um, just he's a he's a basketball junkie. So, you know, just like staying around him, hanging around him, it really just helps you like see basketball from a lot of different views, a lot of different perspectives. You know, he understands the game. Um, like he can he can explain things at a different way than a coach would explain it. And it makes you see the game from a different way. So I think he really just opened my eyes up to a lot of different types of basketball. And, you know, he's got a lot of connections throughout the country through players that he's played with through camps and AAU and that he's played against. So the fact that I was able to be his teammate for two years, you know, I'm I'm thankful for it every day. Um, and I know he's going to be doing big things playing as a professional. Yeah, big things coming for him, big things coming for you and your team this year took us forever to finally get you on here man but i'm so happy that i got to do this interview with you it's really this is in my opinion one of my best interviews to do you really had great answers for all my questions so thank you so much for being on here man and i'm counting down the days till you guys play purdue yeah i thank you and i appreciate you having me